Hey guys, Morgan Promnitz here with Salty Cape and Hoagie Lures. We're here in San Diego, Southern California, and today we're chasing after bluefin tuna. I've got a few of the different setups that we're using today. We're casting the charter grade poppers at these fish, the five inch and the seven inch. Um, see all these birds sitting on the water. There were some tuna just kind of pushing along, but they're, they look like they've moved off already. It's okay. We're gonna find a school here that's gonna stick with it for a bit. Oh, there's tuna. I see tuna right there under those birds. Let's go. They're actually coming out of the water this time. All right, so you can see the tuna blowing up right here. Mike's just gonna position me and see if we can get a cast on these fish. Watch out. Um, first of all, kind of a lighter setup to start with for this five inch popper. I like going with a seven foot six or eight foot medium heavy or, or heavy rod uh, paired up with a 5,000 size reel. This particular reel is a Daiwa Soltiga 5,000. It has 80 pound braid on it and then a three to four foot 60 or 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. The nice thing about this light setup and the spinning reel is you can cast this popper really, really far and, and work it with nice little subtle pops. You know, these fish are feeding on pretty small forage, most of the time three to five inch anchovy. Um, but these clear hoagie poppers, for some reason, they just slurp them up. Oh! Did you see that? That was on my popper, dude. It freaking skied it out of the water. Oh! Yeah! That was a cool eat. <sighs> That was an awesome eat. Okay, it's a race, Mike. Double? Yeah. <laughs> How was that eat? That's on the clear seven inch right there. You just wanna put a nice cast in and uh, get that get that lure in front of the fish. If they're, if they're breezing or just swimming through the water, you wanna to try to lead that school, or if they're foaming, um, obviously get it right in there. But just a nice little subtle pop. If you look at my rod tip, it's not a big crazy jerk like you would for, you know, giant trevally fishing or something. It's just a really nice subtle pop. And today we have pretty calm conditions. So this little popper is gonna just work really nicely. And I'll even let that lure pause for a while, sometimes five, 10, 15 seconds. So long that it's almost uncomfortable. And a lot of the time these fish will come up and just hit that popper once it's stopped on the surface like that. But, so that's kind of this lighter setup for the smaller popper. And then I'll show you what I'm using for the larger uh, seven inch poppers. And, I'm using spinning gear here. You can also use conventional gear. Um, you know, you can use an eight foot or nine foot uh, conventional rod with a heavy duty bait caster um, or something similar to that. <laughs> Mike made a perfect cast into that little ball of foam. <laughs> Beautiful. West Coast Bluefin Tuna on the seven inch. He liked that pink color. For my other spinning setup, I'm using a Daiwa Soltiga 6500, also with 80 pound braid and 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. This particular popper, the seven inch, weighs almost, I think it's three and a half ounces. So it casts extremely far and it's nice and noisy. It's got the rattles in there, a bigger, um, a bigger face on it, so it's gonna push a little bit more water. You can kind of walk the dog with these poppers as well. Um, they're super versatile. And I fish the stock hooks, or um, you know, those are the, the inline J hooks, or you can upgrade or switch them up to uh, treble hooks, depending on your preference. The reason I like a 6,500 size reel is because a lot of the time, 
you're making a cast, especially if it's windy, you need to pick up line fast. Or if you have a tuna eat your lure and he runs towards the boat, you're gonna be able to make up that line and keep tension on the fish. So that's a really um, key factor and a big reason that I go for these larger reels plus the line capacity, right? We've caught fish up to 160 pounds on this setup. Um, obviously you're not gonna wanna be just fighting that fish by yourself. So we actually have a spinning reel harness set up that uh, has a belt that goes over your thighs and then a nice harness over your chest that connects to, to the, uh, the rod and you can actually let go of your rod and rest your back when you need to. So, but the key thing with these spinning setups, for me at least, is casting in wind or when, when there's that mayhem going on, those fish are going crazy and stuff like that, you just cast, you know, you're not having to worry about backlashing your reel or something like that. But if you are uh, a good caster of conventional reels, this is a fantastic setup right here. Um, again, like a Daiwa uh, Soltist 40. This is 80 pound braid. This is an eight foot 10 rod. So anywhere in that eight to nine foot range, this is a heavy rod. It's still light enough though to load up and cast this popper really far. And uh, this particular setup is gonna allow you to fight the fish in a little bit of a different way. You're gonna be able to rail them. So basically what that is, is you're gonna put your rod on the rail, get it underneath your shoulder and hold on top of the reel. That takes a lot of pressure off of your back. And basically you're just letting the rod do the work. It's gonna load up. And as soon as it starts releasing, you just crank down on the fish. But this is a great setup. You know, if I see some bigger fish or we're on a spot of tuna where it's foaming really, really good, I'll grab this setup and, uh, and cast it in there. Cause you can definitely put the wood to them a little bit more with a conventional setup. So that's really it, you know, um, working these poppers. I'll, I'll show you just casting one of the bigger poppers and I'm really gonna wing this thing just to show you how far you can cast it. So you can get it really far away from the boat and that's a, another good thing, you know, these bluefin here on the west coast are a little more boat shy. So getting your lure away from the boat as far as you can is a big thing. And again, I'm not doing giant pops. I'm just doing nice little subtle, subtle pops. Almost keeping that bait in the same spot. If you make a good targeted cast and get that, that lure in the right place, you can basically almost walk the dog with this thing or just pop it real subtle and just let it sit there and they're gonna come up and eat it, so. Let's go, uh, let's go get on some fish now. So, these fish are really keyed in on small bait. And I size down to the five inch charter popper and it was instant. So Mike, there's another one tied on too. I know they're still eating that thing, but that was pretty instant with, on, the, on this fish. Kind of fun, a little bit of a lighter rod. Seven foot six heavy, 5,000 size spinning reel, 80 pound braid and a 60 pound I would say three and a half foot fluorocarbon leader. That's the sound you like to hear. And so when I'm fighting this fish too, I'm not doing giant pumps of the rod, just little, a crank, pull up and get a crank. Pull up, get a crank. You don't want to relieve any pre pressure on this fish. That rod needs to stay bent the whole time. Spike in them.
we're keeping these fish and the humane thing to do is get that brain spike in and kill him right away and then now that we have that brain spike in we'll cut his gills and bleed him a little bit so that 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 toro and that sashimi bluefin tuna is going to be primo but <clears throat> gorgeous fish right there just destroyed that that hoagie <laughs> You gotta love it. Grinding coffee in Southern California on the hoagie charter grade poppers. Oh, we've had an epic day. Started off, we made the run about 55 miles. There's no one around this zone, maybe one other boat. And these fish are up feeding hard on some, on some micro bait, but they don't mind to eat one of these poppers. <laughs> 